welcome to everyone. And I said um, before, please feel free to ask questions throughout today's session. You have been muted upon entry, but um, if you have any questions, make sure you put them in the chat. So if you don't feel comfortable having the questions in the group chat, you can do a private uh, message and then one of the team members will will get to it today. So both Naomi, Jen and Maddie are all on the chat and they'll they'll get back to you or any questions um, they can send them to me and I'll answer them on here. All right. Well welcome everyone. There we go. We're just over two screens. Uh, so I'm Caitlin Middleton. I'm one of the health promotion officers with the Illawarra Shoalhaven Local Health District as part of the HARP team, the HIV and Related Units Program, but you may know us as the Caddyshack Project. I would like to begin today by acknowledging the... Sorry about that. I would like today by... Um, acknowledging the traditional owners of the land and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Where we meet, work and play today is the Wadi Wadi people of the Dharawal Nation. We recognise their powerful connection to land, waterways and sea. We would like to pay, pay our deepest respect to elders past, present, families and communities, survivors and those who never made it home. As we share our knowledge, teaching and learning from today's experience, we also pay respect and acknowledge knowledge embedded forever within Aboriginal custodianship of land. Okay, so let's look at the timeline. Um, you will see this slide throughout today's uh, launch. And I think it's just really important to just really showcase everything that's been involved and everything that's happened over the past 18 months. So you can see from the light bulb moment all the way through to the promotion and the launch today. So where did this project actually start? It was a light bulb moment that started in December 2019, so over 18 months ago. And it was a thought that Naomi and I had. And we were sitting down at Shoalhaven Hospital and we thought, what can we do to empower young people to be able to access health services and reduce barriers for why they're not accessing these health services? So it started with that thought bubble. It was down at Shoalhaven Hospital, December 2019. From here, what we did is we had a vision board. So Naomi and I discussed this in depth and we decided to put in three sections. The first section was young people. So with them being the main focus. The second group we were looking at is youth workers. So the people who actually work with youth and have that rapport with the young people. The third section we decided to look at was GPs themselves, so doctors. Within that, we also looked at practice managers, practice nurses, um, medical centers and allied health staff as well. So there were the three main focus groups that we thought this project would really work for. After much of a team discussion, brainstorming and the vision board, we decided to do a competitive set. So it was really important that we did not reinvent the wheel and we wanted to look to see what already existed. It was here that we started to look at journal articles and papers on barriers of why young people were not accessing health services and what was getting in the way for them. So the mapping, the mapping project, this was probably one of the earlier starting uh, signs. So we started that in December 2019 as well. And then in um, 2020, this is where the mapping really took place with that competitive set and looking at the different journal articles. So here we spoke to a lot of different stakeholders, both non-government organisation, government organisations, Kaima Youth Centre, Illawarra Sexual Health Service, Sydney Sexual Health Service, two practising GPs, Headspace Wollongong and SHIL, Sydney Sexual Health Service. 
From here, we decided to use a usability scale. So we went down and we spoke to a fair few of young people to see if they would actually use this project um, and what they thought, what the needs were. From here, we also looked at what was already out there. So she'll have a downloadable printable referral form that you can actually take to your GP. We found that this was underutilized. So from here, it was where we started to look at a tool that young people had more of a voice and an agency for that, for that voice. So it was after this process that we decided to focus on just one specific area, and that was young people themselves, to empower them to have the knowledge to go to the GP and have that courage and that confidence to be able to ask those questions. So that was a really important uh, factor in this process of the whole mapping and where the young people really then become the focus of this whole, whole project. Just remember, if you do have any questions, please make sure that you put, put them in the chat and we will answer them today. Thank you. All right, so the next three we're looking at is the content development, the design and the final feedback. So this was a very important part as well. And this took some time. So this was pretty much all of 2020. We looked at the content development, we did a lot of drill downs of all sorts and um, we launched in, well, today. Wednesday the 21st of April as part of Youth Week. With the content development, we looked at focus testing different groups, uh, the ideas of QR code, wording contents and different development strategies. The process gained a lot of feedback over the 12 months um, and the youth reference group and the peer act group in Sydney gave a lot of vital feedback into the look, feel and design of how this project was actually gonna work. One of the biggest factors was a conversation start off with doctors. It was really important to have open dialogue with questions to prompt a chat with the, with the GP. So young people had that confidence and they had that knowledge prior to going and accessing that health service. It was also important to be involved um, and explain what was involved in having an STI test. One key finding that came out of this was looking at bulk billing services. So bulk billing was a really, really important factor and then also individuals, um, how they can access services and the services that are in their area. So the HARP team, as you know, we, um, we do a lot of online education and we use a lot of regular, reliable, trustworthy, um, accurate sites. And we thought we wanted to collate it all together and share our information with all the sites that we use on a regular basis and share that and have that all in one place for young people to access or anyone within the community. Um, so we also needed to put this information in about Medicare and why it was important that young people can access their own Medicare card at the age of 15. You will see when I launched the project today, we have put a link in how to access your own Medicare card and the ways to go about that. Like I was saying before, there were a lot of edits and um, drill downs into the content that is in this launch and is in this project. It was really important to make sure that health literacy was key in this project. And we had a lot of drill downs with um, the content and we ran through the Hemingsworth, which is a readability scale. So that's something that health use on a regular basis but that was a really good um, tool to make sure that it had a readability scale and the health literacy was there for everyone. For the promotion purposes, we also decided to leverage off a really successful project within the Illawarra Shell Haven that the HARP team have um, integrated into the community. And that is the condom dispenser project. So I have a condom dispenser to show you quickly. Um, so these are in different services. So 78 different organisations have these and I will explain this a little bit later in depth. 
we decided to leverage off this project and put QR codes on all of our condom dispensers. So they will be sent out later um, this week. And thanks to 2020, uh, QR codes definitely did get normalised. So that was definitely a silver lining for 2020 is the QR codes normalising it and people understanding how to actually use those. So we decided to use that to our benefit um, and put the QR codes and that is an access point to, to get into this project. So the Caddyshack colours, which is our green, yellow and pink, which I will show later as well, we decided to keep that the same because we wanted to align with our Caddyshack branding with this project. So it's all in as one. The logos, the text and the pictures are all inclusive and have been focus tested previously. So we decided to leverage off that and keep it all alignment in together. Okay. Are there any questions? Are getting answered? No. Okay. So um, one of the PlaySafe programs, the peer eds were really excellent in helping with the look and the feel of this. I spoke to them quite in depth over multiple times about what would work, what wouldn't work, if they like the QR code, if they like the pictures, all sorts of different things. So I really want to thank them for all their vital feedback over the past um, 18 months. And yeah, thank, thank you a lot. We also did a lot of consultation with Headspace Wollongong. So I met with the local YIG members over the space of 2020 and got their final feedback only a couple of weeks ago. From here, I had an open-ended questionnaire. We looked at the final design, looked at the text, made sure it was youth appropriate, very inclusive, um, yeah, and just everything. So what I'm gonna do now is actually introduce Amy Pryor. So Amy Pryor is a 24 year old who grew up in Wollongong. She has been a member of the Headspace Wollongong Youth Group for six years and counting. Being part of the team at a center and being an integral part of the youth focused care and support they provide is something Amy feels is important to keep Headspace authentic and appropriate for local youth. So I just want to um, introduce Amy now and she's going to speak a little bit more about the focus testing and, um, and also how she found the whole focus testing. And I just want to point out the YIG stands for the Youth Reference Group. So all Headspace Centres uh, Australia wide will have a Youth Reference Group. All right. Thanks, Amy. Um, oh, hi, everyone. Um, uh, we were really excited when Caitlin approached us about providing input into, for, into the project because it's such an empowering project for young people. Um, the whole way through, Caitlin generally sought out our opinions and incorporated our feedback. The final tool, tool that we are launching today is so great. It's simple, easy to use and full of information that young people want and need. There are two things we really love about this tool. The first is that it's inclusive and respective of everyone, including trans young people, and we're really grateful we could provide that input. The second thing we like is the access to the QR code, which can be used in private places where condom dispensers are located. We think that this is a great idea that young people will utilize and appreciate. Thank you so much to Caitlin and the HARP team for coming to Headspace and letting us be a part of this project. Thanks, Amy. Thank you. Thank you. And I just want to reinforce, if it wasn't for these young people, this project wouldn't have got off the ground. So um, a huge thank you to, to Headspace and the Peer Act group in, in Sydney. Thanks, Amy. Okay, on to the launch. So um, it's now 11, quarter past 11, and I'm going to showcase the YET project. I'm sure you're super eager to find out what it actually is, because I've been harping on for the last 15 minutes about everything, um, which I think is really important. But yeah, um, Wednesday, 21st of April, launching. Woohoo! Okay, everyone can tell I'm very excited about this. Okay, so there are different access points to um, go and access yet. So the first one is actually on our website page. So as you can see, here is the Caddyshack project. On the left-hand side, we've got all our different tabs. So home, our story, other stuff, blog, newsletter, everything else. Um, and then you've got the tab with yet. 
So that's one of the ways that you can access. The second way one is through the QR code, which will be on the condom dispenser, which I did show you before. Um, that's okay if you're not in the Illawarra Shore Haven, we can still send one of these out to you. The third way is we've actually got business cards. So on the business cards, we've got our Caddyshack branding. Thanks, Maddie. We've got our Caddyshack branding and on the back is the QR code as well. So this um, will hopefully sit in youth centres, medical centres um, and all sorts. But you would have received, um, you could have opted in to receive five of these when you registered for this training. That's okay if you um, didn't get them, we can make sure we send them out to you. Okay, so let's have a look. So as you can see, the Youth Empowerment Tool, there are three main tabs. The stuff you need to know before you go, going for an STI test and knowledge is power. So the first one, the stuff you need to go. So this is really important where, um, as I discussed before, all about the Medicare card and accessing your own Medicare card at 15. If you click onto these hyperlinks, it will take you to an external website where you can actually get the um, Medicare card. We also talk about bulk billing. As you can see, there's not heaps of words on the screen because this was really, really important and part of the feedback that we did receive from the focus testing. These websites are the reliable, trustworthy websites that uh, HARP use on a regular basis. And these were also focus tested to make sure that they were websites that young people would use. So if you click on family planning, it will take you to their external website and all the information is on there. So this is about gaining that knowledge before people actually go and access the GP. So that's the first one. The second one is going for an STI test. So if we click on that, It talks about what's involved in going for an STI test. Another really important feature for this one was showing and putting in a YouTube clip. So having really visual images and um, clips so people could, if they don't want to read all the, the text, they can listen to it and, and visualise it as well. And this one did take a lot of work to see what we wanted to put in there and also what would work, what, um, what maybe wouldn't work, but making sure it was still relatable to young people and it was easy to comprehend as well, but still putting all the information in there. As you can see here, we've hyperlinked different sexual health clinics within New South Wales and also the sexual health info link as well, where you can phone up and ask questions by an accredited um, registered sexual health nurse. That is the third one. Sorry, the second one. And then when we look at the third one, knowledge is power. Um, so not to be biased, but this is probably my favourite tab. Um, so this section here, you can see it's, uh, it's broken down into three parts. So you've got contraception, and these are either questions or statements. This project is ever evolving and over time, these questions will change, but these questions and statements have been focus tested and these are the questions that your young people wanted to know more about. So we can look at contraception. Then the next one is STIs. It's on a carousel. And then the third one is other important stuff. And it will keep rotating through. The conversation starts with doctors is a really good tool. Um, and that's through Health Direct. It will take you to an external website and it will have specific questions in there. So those questions, a young person can tick those and then it's printed all together. They can take that to the GP or um, the sexual health nurse and they can get all those questions answered. And as you can see as well, there's the arrows. There's, we can go back and forward. 
on all of those tabs. I'm not going to go into like click into all of them today, um, but in your own time, you can go and check out the different websites. And these are reliable, trustworthy websites that we've made sure um, and they have been focus tested as well. So they're the three main ones. Do I have any questions at all from anyone? And these are specific. So for instance, we're answering those questions or those statements. So the websites will be specific for, for them. Another big thing that we did receive feedback on was how many questions should we have? So this one uh, had a lot of work around having it as just one big page and then we decided to break it up and it was mentioned that there should be no more than five questions because we don't want to confuse the audience with um, what's happening. Okay, I'll go back. On the phone, it will look slightly different. So um, those that do have a phone and want to check it out, I have put the QR code after today. And um, we found, especially people are using the condom dispensers and that's where they're getting the QR code from and accessing it through there. Um, it's really easy, simple to use, uh, and it's all on, on your phone. So they're, they're the main ones. I might just show the QR code again on the promotion for the. There's just a few people in the chat who want to oh. see um, all of the. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks for putting on. that through. So um, I'll click on Acon. You click on there and then it will take you to Acon's page. So that's their home page. But if you go to say the knowledge is power section, we've went and answered the specific question, which will be in their web page, but it's not their home page. If that makes sense. I'm hoping that makes sense to everyone. <laughs> um, Some great feedback through the chat box. Oh, that's good to know. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that one, um, Transform. So that's all of the home page. And I'll just quickly show you on the knowledge is power section what I mean by it takes you to like specific answers. So for instance, which contraception suits me? If I click on that, it will take me to contraception.org. And in here, if you go down, welcome to contraceptive.org, find your perfect partner. So find your perfect partner. If I take that quiz, it will take me through different questions and then it will talk about the different contraception methods and what's involved with those contraception methods, the, the availability, uh, the effectiveness, things like that. And it will go to what the questions that you've said. It's also inclusive to everyone with a focus on young people. If I go on to how to prevent an STI. Oh, talks me to play safe and talks about, could I have an STI? Different ones like that. Okay. So that's just a small snippet of the launch today. Um, there's still, this is just the starting point for the launch and where it's going to go from, from here. And any feedback would be greatly appreciated too. So if you, yeah, you want some input, yeah, or feedback, please let me know. So we will continue as well. Um, good point so we will continue to evolve and um review this website because there's nothing worse when you go into a project and it hasn't been updated since you know 2010 um so 
it will be reviewed every three to six months and we will be changing our content all the time to make sure it's up to date, reliable information like we do with our website as well. Okay, so promotion of it. So moving forward, so after we've launched today, it's officially um, been in the works for a long time, but it's officially out there now and people can access it and you can promote it within your services. You can tell your young people, tell the community, tell everyone. Um, so we have created what's called a social media toolkit. Um, I'm more than happy to send that through to you for your service. And in there is just different logos, um, different images that we recommend to use different size of text all those things so it's all in there and the pictures are in there too so it's really easy for you to use and to then promote on to your service so we decided to make that um yeah really easy for everyone so they're more likely to promote it and use it We've also got a communication plan. So um, my email will be on there. And if you do have any questions or you want to find out more, please make sure that you get in contact with me. Um, we will be going through service updates. So different interagency meetings, all of the HARP teams. So myself, Maddie, Jen and Naomi will be promoting this throughout um, the La Rochelle Haven and through our education sessions. So we do what's called a shoe session, a sexual health outreach education session. We'll be promoting it through there. Um, and it will be on the condom dispensers, which I'm just gonna show you, just so, so you can see. So if you do, uh, if you are in the Illawarra Shore Haven and you do want a condom dispenser installed in your service, we're more than happy to install them for you. It's free of charge we um, deliver the sleeve. So there's 50 condoms in a sleeve and um, we'll be putting all of these. So after today, I'll be sending out these stickers and they'll go on all the condom dispensers. If you're not in the Illawarra Shell Haven, that's totally fine. You can still use this project as well. Um, we'll. We can just send you out one of these stickers and some business cards as well, which I showed before. So they're in our three main colors and then the QR codes on the back can see oh that's upside down <laughs> there we go so there are um, different ways that you can uh, utilize this project so where to from here this is really exciting um we will continue to promote it like i've said before on the dispensers the business cards the qr codes everything like that and um, what is really exciting though is we uh, meeting with the third year graphic design students at UOW. So we have worked with them previously in the past and they're going to look at the design. Um, I've been to a couple of their sessions before and they're just amazing because we're not graphic designers in, in this team. Um, we're savvy, but um, yeah, it's good to see different ideas. And a good way for that as well is we do make sure that it's going to be a youth focus. So the graphic design students will look at that in the third year and see what they think may need changing um, and different images maybe to, to change it up a bit. So that's what's happening from here. So that will start soon. We are also going to be promoting it all the way through our social media channels. So um, we have an Instagram page and we also have a Facebook page. Maddie is fantastic at doing the Insta page, making sure it's all beautiful. Um, if you haven't looked at it, yeah, go, go and have a look. It's really, really cool. So that's what's what happening from there. And we will be also going back and doing some more focus testing on some questions that may arise in the near future and different questions that people want to hear about. So whatever young person, if they want to find out more about a specific, I don't know, contraception or um, a specific STI, maybe we might add that down the future. So that's just some things from where to from here. And um, yeah, it'd be great if you could promote it in your service. If you do want us to come and speak, if you are in the Illawarra Shell Haven, we're more than happy to come and um, speak to you more in depth about this as well. Do you have any questions? Lots of love. Oh, mm -hmm. that's nice. <laughs> Thanks everyone. Thanks for the support. Big congratulations from everybody in the chat room. Great. Um, I'm just seeing if I've missed anything from here. The toolkit, which I've explained before, we are going to have the media toolkit. 
that provides the suggested text and that's a really good one as well um, I think it makes it a lot easier for people if it's all there on one page it doesn't make it confusing it's just you can pretty much copy and paste it and then go from there um, and if you are speaking to your networks and they do want to find out more about the YET project and there's different um, different questions yeah please make sure that you get in contact with myself Hey, so that's it for me today. But before I do let you go, it is, um, it's only 11.30, but that's okay because I wanted to just show you a snippet tool. And in your own time, I want you to go in and have a look at the YET project more in depth and what you think about it. While we're here, there are a fair few people that I do want to thank. So um, just the, the YRG, so the Youth Reference Group, if it wasn't for, for you all, um, this project wouldn't have happened. So thank you so much. Thanks to Amy who came in today and spoke and Amanda, um, who's the community engagement officer. The Peer Act group in Sydney, um, just fantastic. People that are gonna promote this as well, like thank you for that. Um, but massive thanks to, and enormous thanks to the team. So um, those that know us in the team, we work very uh, closely as team collaborate and if it wasn't for Maddie, Jen and Naomi, this project wouldn't have happened. So big thank you to them as well. Any questions, please make sure that you do um, write them in. As you can see, the QR code's down the bottom. So if you do want to grab your phones out now and um, have a look, you can scan that QR code and it will take you straight through to the YET project. So I will leave that on um, for a little bit and go from there. And if, yeah, if you do have any questions, please make sure that you send them through and we can answer them for you. You might unmute everybody so they can all say Yeah, things. if everyone wants to, Maddie's just unmuting everyone if you do want to say anything. It's a really nice way to think about how to be really comprehensive and include voices of young people and make sure that nothing is existing that already you know covers those bases. It's just a great reminder of doing you know very thorough work. So thank you. Oh, thanks, Victoria. That's that's really good feedback. Thank you. We will be sending out an email with the surveys so of the evaluation survey. So if there's anything that you think, oh. Actually, I really wanted to say that, but I didn't remember when we were doing it. Or, um, yeah, you can put it in the evaluation survey from there, and um, I'll I'll get all that data late, later. It is um, private, so you're not going to see who who says what. Um, but yeah, thanks thanks so 